the entire employee handbook, if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find it. So for instance, if my manager is mean, I can put in mean manager and it'll search the entire <laughs> employee handbook and find the section on mean managers. With their, yeah, with Ted's picture right next to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, uh, and, the, and, and the funny thing is, if you ever hear the manager say something in a particularly sticky situation, just for fun, you can go into the supervisor's edition and search the supervisor's edition and go, oh, and now I know where they get all that stuff. So it's all right there. It's all in Netscape, and it's kind of fun to uh, look at. But in, in all seriousness, I mean, that's pretty powerful because right now, you know, you go searching through the employee handbook for something, and you get it right on Netscape. Next one is the Wells Fargo directory. So throw away your inner office phone book or throw it in your car because you need that when you're out on the road. But when you're in the office, you know, if I want to find out every person's phone number in, I don't know, Grant's office in Salt Lake, I don't need to go to a phone list. All I have to do is put in their MAC number and it'll give me every person with that MAC number's phone number. Or I can put in their AU and it gives me everybody at that AU's phone number. It's pretty neat. You should try it because it just returns that form for you. If you go to the next page, please, um, has anyone used the search engines on Netscape? Okay, this is where, um, I'll give you an example. I'll just tell the story, and then you can fill in the blanks. I go out on a call and, with the BFO, and the guy basically snubs us. Yeah, yeah, give me, give me whatever it is you want to talk about, um, which was a letter of commitment at the time. I've got things I've got to do. And they were scrambling. Well, what's going on? We have ISO 9000 testing next week, or they were coming in to do the testing. ISO 9000, what the hell is that? You know, but he was really, he was kicking us out. Yeah, thanks for coming by, get out. So I needed to send him something back over and I thought, you know what I'm gonna do is I went back and I just typed in ISO 9000 and if you'll flip to the next page, oh, actually I typed in ISO 9000, stay on the page that you were at, and what it gave me back, if you'll notice, were 6001 relevant documents to ISO 9000. So I got more information, I mean, you make your head explode. I got more information on ISO 9000 so I pick one of the documents on the first page, and it's the ISO 9000 support group. And what it does is it talks about their mission. It gives you a definition of ISO 9000. So I was able to pull a couple of relevant things out of here. And when I sent the thank you note back to him after our call, I was able to reference a couple of things from the ISO 9000 article. You know, geez, I hope you do OK with the, you know, Kisfinkter uh test or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, laminate this card or whatever. But that's the thing that makes you an instant expert and you can use this stuff and empower yourselves on calls. When you hear a term, when you're with a plastic injection molder that you don't understand, pop it in Netscape, I guarantee you it will pull something up, even if it's in German. Um, the next thing <laughs> is uh, Comps Online. I mean, this is a powerful tool. It's gonna get more powerful as things go nationwide. I mean, this is a company that is nationwide. They can give you property-specific comps. They can do sorts online for brokers in your particular area who are the real hitters. In this case, what I just pulled down were um, some brokerages sorted by who's doing business in New York and who's really throwing their weight around. But you can drill down on this to the broker level so you know where to spend time. And this is just a sampling of what's available, you know? I mean, it's, there's that much stuff out there. And that's why I wanted to throw all this at you um, and not spend too much time talking about applications, but just give you a sense of possibility for you to use your imagination and just flesh out the landscape. So. Let me get to the very last slide here, which is oops, things to learn, questions to ask. Things to learn. It's a given. You gotta know Excel, you gotta know Word, Access, Relational Database, WinFax, Netscape, MS Mail, etc. But those are some basic tools that if you know them and you get them wired, uh, will really arm you in the marketplace. The place I would start, if I learn nothing else right off the bat, is WinFax, because WinFax, you can attach things to WinFax, but if you knew nothing else, at least WinFax has a cover page thing, so if I want to communicate with you know, 23 influencers that I work, work with on a regular basis, I can do it through the WinFax cover page, and then I can figure out all the bells and whistles, because what I want to do is learn Word next, so I can start attaching the applications to my faxes that go out, things like that. Um, some questions to ask, you know, how can you use these tools to leverage your time versus just layering activities on top of each other. I hope I've given you a sense of that. What's not here, there's a lot, especially as technology is changing and they continue to push the envelope. Are you always becoming more employable? I guarantee you, you learn this stuff, you have made yourself a lot more employable and more valuable to this company or any other. Things to consider or things to read. Alvin Toffler, you know, George Gilder, futurist, really into technology. 
Uh, Toffler has this nasty habit that people refer to him as he had the, having a nasty habit of getting it right when he's talking about the future and technology. Bill Gates, the road ahead, talks a lot about things that he sees coming in the next couple years, especially uh, related to the Internet. So with that, I will open it up for questions, please. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Nesbitt had it right when he, when he coined the phrase uh, high-tech, high-touch. I don't think that it would be wise to just become an absolute propeller head and forget about the human interpersonal uh, aspects of this business. I mean, the thing that you want to do with technology is get yourself farther down the road so that when you're with people, you're capitalizing on being a human and making people feel important. But I, I think that's where technology helps with the high-touch piece is by getting, you know, if you get that article and you know that 37 people on your phone list would really appreciate having an article that affects their business, and I can just grab manufacturers, throw them over in the fax thing, and send that article on new regulations in Dallas on manufacturing. Um, that's kind of a touch part, but the balance piece is, um, you know, our business, the segment that we deal with, we deal with the owners, and they like, they like dealing with their banker, but the technology helps you help them. Uh, leverage their time and their business as well. Uh, so, that's yeah. Gates. Well, there's a utility finger, but Gates talks a lot about uh, intelligent assistance, which is software that has already been released in a couple of different versions. But coming down the pike, you'll see a lot more intelligent assistance that. Well, for instance, the Wall Street Journal is a good example of that. The personal journal, you can put in all the things in your portfolio, all of your interests, and all the stuff about you. You do a bio, and when you log on to the Wall Street Journal, it pulls up your personal journal, which is just populated with articles of your interest, stock quotes on your company, so you don't have to waste your time with the other stuff. But intelligent assistance will take it one step farther based on your preferences and allow you to have these moments of serendipity where it kind of throws something your way that it thinks you'll think are kind of cool. So. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, you can look in there right now. Um, I know a lot of the larger, like um, uh, iQuest, some of the ones on CopyServe, the engines where all the magazines and people put up all their text-based stuff, um, they're coming down on the Internet. They're not all there right now because right now they charge for their service, and I don't think they're crazy about giving it away. So when they figure out a way to pay for it, um, I think you'll see that a lot more. Yeah. Now, WinFax is on your laptop. You will not see WinFax when you're logged onto the network. You'll see it when you're logged on in standalone mode. Uh, it's there when you're on the network. You just have to find it through File Manager. So when you're doing all this queuing and batching during the day, you can just run it in the background. Um, I asked Dennis McDonald, he's on vacation right now, if he would add the icon to the desktop while you're on the network as well so you can at least do that stuff during the day even if you're not sending the faxes right then. And he said he would do that. So it's there. But you're right, you see fax works, and yeah, it's a different. Yeah, right. If you change print setup and you print, it will bring up WinFax, even if you're on the network. Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's installed on a desktop, you can. Um, LandFax, which is a, a utility for faxing off of the LAN, works in a lot of areas. It does not work for us in Southern California right now, so it just depends on where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff, isn't it? I mean, it's just a lot of, a lot of stuff, and, and I know it goes fast, but uh, I appreciate your patience, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to talk to you throughout the conference, but uh, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Marie has something that she needs for you to fill out. Okay.